how much like mushiness and mess is there? Because I, uh, you know, taking biology classes, the diagrams are always really clean and crisp. Neuroscience, the pictures of neurons are always really nice and very. Yeah. Um, but whenever I look at pictures of like real brains, they're all, I, I don't know what is going on. Yeah. Uh, so how much are biological systems in reality, like how hard is it to figure out what's going on? Not too bad. Uh, once you really get used to this, you know, that's where experience and, and skill and uh, education really come into play is if you stare at a thousand brains, it becomes easier to kind of mentally peel back the, say, for instance, blood vessels that are obscuring the sulci and gyri, you know, kind of the wrinkle pattern of the surface of the brain. Occasionally, when you're when you're first starting to do this and you open the skull, it doesn't match what you thought you were going to see based on the MRI. Uh, and with more experience, you you learn to kind of peel back that layer of blood vessels and see the underlying pattern of wrinkles in the brain and uh, use that as a landmark for where you are. The wrinkles are a landmark? So like- Yeah. So I was describing hand knob earlier. That's a pattern of the wrinkles in the brain. It's sort of this sort of Greek letter omega shaped mm -hmm. area of the brain. So you could recognize the hand knob area? Like if, if I show you a thousand brains, and give you like one minute with each, you'd be like, yep, that's that. Sure. And so there is some uniqueness to that area of the brain, like in terms of the geometry, the topology of the thing. Yeah. Where, where is it about in the... It's, uh, so you have this strip of brain running down the top, yep. uh, called the primary motor area. And I'm sure you've seen this picture of the homunculus laid over the surface of the brain, the weird little guy with huge lips and giant hands. Uh, that guy sort of lays with his legs uh, up at the top of the brain and, and face arm uh, areas farther down and, and then some kind of mouth, lip, tongue areas uh, farther down. And so the hand is right in there and then the areas that control speech, at least on the, on the left side of the brain in most people are, are just below that. And so uh, any muscle that you voluntarily move in your body, um, the vast majority of that references that strip or those intentions come from that strip That's of brain and the, the wrinkle uh, for hand knob is right in the middle of that. And vision is back, back here. Yep. Also on close to the surface. Vision's a little deeper. Uh, and so, you know, this gets to your question about how deep can you get. Um, to do vision, we can't just do the surface of the brain. We have to be able to go in, uh, not not as deep as we have to go for DBS, but maybe a centimeter deeper than we're used to for hand insertions. Uh, and so that's you know work in progress. That's uh, a new set of challenges to overcome. By the way, you mentioned uh, the Utah array, and I just saw a picture of that, and that thing looks terrifying. Yeah, because it's <laughs> it's because it's rigid, and then if you look at the threads, they're flexible. What can you say that's interesting to you about the flexible, that kind of approach of the the flexible threads to to deliver the electrodes next to the neurons? Yeah, I mean the the goal there comes from experience. I mean we stand on the shoulders of people that made Utah rays and and used Utah rays for decades before we ever even came along. Um. Neuralink arose partly, this approach to technology arose out of a need recognized after Utah rays would fail routinely because the rigid electrodes, those spikes that are literally hammered using an air hammer into the brain, uh, those spikes generate a bad immune response that encapsulates the, the electrode spikes in uh, scar tissue, essentially. And so one of the projects that was being worked on in, in the Anderson lab at Caltech when I got there was to see if you could use chemo therapy to prevent the formation of scars. Like, you know, <laughs> things are pretty bad when you're jamming a bed of nails into the brain and then treating that with chemotherapy to try to prevent scar tissue. It's like, 
you know, maybe we've gotten off track here, guys. Maybe there's a fundamental redesign necessary. And so Neuralink's approach of using highly flexible, tiny electrodes avoids a lot of the bleeding, avoids a lot of the immune response that ends up happening uh, when rigid electrodes are pounded into the brain. And so what we see is our electrode longevity and functionality uh, and, the, and the health of the brain tissue immediately surrounding the electrode uh, is excellent. I mean, it goes on for, for years now in, in our animal models. What do most people not understand about the biology of the brain? We'll, we'll mention the vasculature. That's really interesting. I think the most interesting, maybe underappreciated fact uh, is that it really does control almost everything. I mean, I don't know, for an out-of-the-blue example, imagine you you want a lever on fertility. You want to be able to turn fertility on and off. I mean, it, there are legitimate targets in the brain itself to modulate fertility. Say, um, blood pressure. You want to modulate blood pressure. There are legitimate targets in the brain for doing that. Um, th things that aren't immediately obvious as brain problems uh, are potentially solvable in the brain. Um, and so I think it's an underexplored area for primary treatments of all, of all the things that bother people. That's a really fascinating way to look at it. Like there's a lot of conditions we might think have nothing to do with the brain but they might just be symptoms of something that actually started in the brain. The actual source of the problem, the, the primary source is, the, is something in the brain. Yeah, not, not always. I mean, you know, their kidney disease is real, uh, mm -hmm. but um, there are levers you can pull in the brain that affect all of, the, all of these systems. There's knobs. Yeah. <laughs> On off switches and knobs in the brain yeah. that, from which this all or originates. Yeah.